A veteran stand-up comedian, Leanne was the New York City face of African Americans for Humanism Outreach. Uh, Oh my goodness, I can't read my own writing. Oh, the campaign sponsored by CFI. She's also been the co-host of the Emmy-nominated Star Talk with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Please give a very warm welcome to Leanne Lord. Felt good. <laughs> Do it again. Ooh, hey, Skepticon. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> you guys having a good time so far? Yes. Good, good. I I am so pleased to be here. Skepticon 10. I, I, I'm just curious, how many people? Like, round of applause, I've been here for all 10. Round, is it, do we have some all 10 folks? Okay, okay. Um, round of applause, who's, who's, it's their first one. Their first, <laughs> Fantastic, and was the reason for coming is because it's Springfield and now they've moved it? <laughs> I, 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 I hear, I heard moving it and I'm like, yes, New York. Yay! <laughs> but I was skeptical of that, so it didn't happen. <laughs> oh my goodness, everybody. I am, I am very pleased to be here. Thank you so much um, for inviting me. As I, was, as I was walking down the hallway, sort of the, the gauntlet of skepticism, everybody was like, oh, we're ready to laugh. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Here's where, where, where I am in, in, in life right now. I, I can't believe we are like so far. The year's gone. Like we're in November, right? I'm not, is anybody ready for the holidays? Anybody? I'm really not ready. Cause I, I didn't do it right last year. Like, well, I tried last year. Uh, last, uh, last year I invited my, my therapist over uh, for, for Thanksgiving dinner. And um, you know, so she could see what I'm working with. And uh, yeah, she's in therapy now, so. <laughs> I'm shopping if anybody has services. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big um, Christmas person, and I'll be honest, the reason is because I, I don't know if you've seen these commercials. I think they've stopped. Uh, perhaps it's my angry emails. Um, the Lexus December to Remember commercials. Do you guys get those here? Some of you have, yeah, no, I, I, I disliked the commercials intensely because they were so unrealistic. It would have been so much better if they had, you know, the, you know, the commercial and then the repo man in the background <laughs> hooking up the Lexus. <laughs> that would have been more reflective of our, of our economic times. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm also not looking forward to our, our year-end tradition um, that we do. You guys know what I'm talking about? Setting New Year's resolutions. When do we learn, everybody? When do we learn? What's the number one New Year's resolution, everybody? I, why do we do that to ourselves? You know what? Just, just get some spanks. Call it a day. I'll be honest. Tonight's show is brought to you by Spanx. And if it looks like I'm not wearing Spanx, that's because I'm wearing Spanx. I'm a very satisfied customer. <laughs> I actually, here, here's why I have that opinion now. I, I started the year, uh, I did what everybody did. I, I joined a gym, and after about a week, I was ready to quit. <laughs> but I held out. I held out till Martin Luther King Day, because I have a dream. <laughs> uh, it, 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 let me ask you this. Um, round of applause, how many of you hate the gym? Round of applause if you hate the gym. And the rest of you are lying, what? <laughs> yes, Leanne, I love the gym. No, you don't. Oh my God, it's a horrible place. Torture chamber, great place to waste money. Uh, here's what I realized. It's not the gym per se for me. It's the locker room, right? I'm, I'm terrified by the random old lady nakedness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know what, I was traumatized. I saw a lady in there one time in her boobies down her belly button. And I'm like, 
there's no workout that's gonna fix that. <laughs> like, we need to get on the stick and find a cure for gravity, because I'm not going out like that. <laughs> I have what I think is a better idea. I think it's better if you pick an exercise or an activity that you enjoy, right? That way you might have a chance of sticking with it and having a good time, right? But the problem is you gotta try a bunch of different stuff, right? I'm trying to save you time for New Year's. You gotta pick a bunch of stuff. Like some people say that, uh, that walking is good exercise because you could do it anywhere. No, you can't, right? In my neighborhood, you start out walking and end up running. <laughs> you gonna need a really good pair of cross trainers for that. <laughs> Had some friends of mine suggest that I, uh, I do yoga and, and now I need some new friends. Um, <laughs> is anybody here? Any, any, any yoga people? Do I have any yoga folks? Any yoga folks? New York? Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. one or two people, yeah. right? Okay. Can, can I tell you what I like about yoga? I like the names of the poses. Oh, yes. Right? Because they're so memorable. You know, like Tadasana, Mufasa, <laughs> Akuna Matata. <laughs> Downward slum dog facing millionaire. Am I getting any of this right? Now? You know what I find for, for the, the couple of folks who, who do yoga, thank you for speaking up. I think most people try it and they get discouraged because they thought it was going to be easier, right? And they had no idea. They, here, here's what's hard that the instructor is going to ask you to do the most impossible things in the sweetest of voices. <laughs> right? Like close your eyes, take a deep breath. Fold your ass into the shape of a pentagram. <laughs> Please stop crying. <laughs> you know what happened to me, guys? I, I actually hurt my knee. I hurt my knee doing yoga. I, I hyperextended it, and now I can't drop it like it's hot. <laughs> nah, I have to carefully set it down at room temperature. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> You gotta try stuff though, you gotta try stuff. I, uh, I took a Pilates class. Anybody? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh no is the exact response, that's correct. Cause I, I think Pilates is like French for torture, right? <laughs> Cause it was a strap, right? Wrapped around my foot, pulling it to the ceiling. I heard something snap. <laughs> and the instructor was like, well this exercise is designed to open your pelvis. <laughs> Are you a Pilates instructor or a gynecologist? <laughs> like, when did they start doing pap smears at the gym? <laughs> I actually went to my gynecologist recently, and so <laughs> he told me that I have a tilted uterus. I was like, really? He said, yeah, it tilts to the right. I'm like, so I'm liberal, but my vagina is conservative? <laughs> probably how it should be. <laughs> wow, I've tried so many things. I've tried so many things. I've actually, uh, I should, uh, took up golf. I took up golf for a little while. Do I have any golfers in the room? Any golfers in the room? Hey, hey, hey. How you doing? Thank you. I, uh, you know what it was? I, uh, had a little, little Tiger Woods crush. Yeah, yeah, until I found out I'm not his type. <laughs> I'm not a natural blonde. <laughs> Yeah, but I uh, actually heard a sportscaster say once that he thought women were incapable of being good golfers because our breasts get in the way. <laughs> I know, right? This is ridiculous. Because using that logic, uh, men are incapable of being good runners. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm pretty confident this side of the room got it. What happened here? <laughs> Do I need to PowerPoint this shit for some of y'all? Because <laughs> I will slow down, okay? I, I have a very strict policy, no joke left behind, okay? I don't want you all with me. Matter of fact, you know what, here's the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm really easy and laid back. If I do a joke that you guys don't get till later, just call me up, go ha ha ha, hang up, I'll know what's wrong. <laughs> But pick an exercise, pick an, pick an activity or an exercise that, uh, that you enjoy doing. I mean, that's, that's really, 
really what it comes down to, right? Like, oh, oh my gosh, does anybody, anybody in here do Zumba? Has anybody ever done Zumba? Yeah. <gasps> Isn't Zumba the best? Oh my God, it's like going to the club without a cover charge, right? <laughs> you just get to dance, it's so much fun. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Have you ever seen that girl in Zumba class that takes it way too seriously? <laughs> she knows every move. Right, she's just waiting for the instructor to drop dead because that's gonna be her moment. <laughs> that's me, bitches. <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> Here's the thing though, I think that you can tell a lot about somebody by how they move their body, right? Or don't, right? Like, like whenever we have a mass shooting and they interview the neighbors, they never say, really? But he was such a good dancer. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe the gun background check should have a dance component. <laughs> like if you can't keep a beat, you don't get a gun. <laughs> right? You can't bust a move, you don't bust a cap. I think these are really... Now, the problem with that is that if we're going stereotypically, um, this is going to change the complexion of gun ownership in America. Because <laughs> the way some white guys dance, they're not going to get a license to use silverware. <laughs> Like, oh my God, look at him, poor bastard, trying to eat steak with a spoon. Oh, <laughs> so sad. <laughs> of course, this will probably backfire on me, right? All of a sudden, a whole bunch of extremist dudes are showing up to my Zumba class. <laughs> like, Zach, Mike, Tyler, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> What's with the tiki torches? <laughs> you gonna trip over that, boo. You need to put that down. <laughs> Listen, I, I should have told you guys up front, I am completely comfortable making you laugh one at a time. <laughs> That's my thing, okay? I call it target comedy. <laughs> I'll get to you. <laughs> yeah, you guys, man. Listen, life is, life is really short, man. Pick something you enjoy, right? That you have fun with. Like, you know, I, I really actually do do Zumba now, and I really am that chick, um, hyper competitive. Um, but I used to do uh, mixed martial arts. Yes, yes, I, I used to do kickboxing and submission grappling because hurting people emotionally takes too long. <laughs> Anymore. I don't train anymore because the place where I used to go, the school I went to, they didn't group us by age. They grouped us by size and ability, right? So I found myself in the ring fighting 17 year olds. Yeah, yeah, these chicks fight like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> I fight like I gotta go to work in the morning. <laughs> 17, 17 is evil. They got energy to burn. Right? I was buying energy five hours at a clip. Do y'all understand? <laughs> you know the worst part? The worst part? When they got hurt, they still healed. <laughs> like vampires. <laughs> I was walking around smelling like Tiger Bomb. Everybody's like, oh my God, what's that smell? My pride. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't even really know what Tiger Bomb smells like, right? Because the first time I took the cap off, it burned out the lining of my nose. <laughs> now, I, you know, here's the thing, I should not have assumed, I shouldn't have assumed. You guys, do you guys know what Tiger Bomb is? Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, I am so sorry, I really am. Uh, for those of you who don't, keep not doing what you're doing. <laughs> No, I didn't know at first, and so I started working out really hard. And um, 
Somebody explained it to me. They said that, that Tiger Bomb is like Ben Gay on steroids. Okay. But even that explanation is a little insufficient, right? Like, do you guys remember the movie Alien? Okay, there was a scene in the movie Alien where the alien got cut and it bled and its blood was like acid and it burned through the deck plate of the spaceship. That, that's Tiger Bomb. <laughs> and I found this out for myself when I had a really, really rough kickboxing class and I, I went home and my legs hurt and I said, okay, I'm gonna try this and I, I put Tiger Bomb on right here on my thighs. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a mistake. <laughs> I, I, I tried to wash it off. Yes, yes, yeah, Tiger Bomb don't wash off. Water just spreads it around. <laughs> you guys, uh, my eggs are fried. <laughs> Like, if I ever have a baby, it's gonna pop out looking like seal. Like, woo. I'm sorry, is he no longer a viable pop culture reference? Is that... Because y'all knew who I meant. <laughs> well, actually, yes. <laughs> oh, man. Here's the thing. Whatever you, you choose to do, you know, whatever exercise or whatever activity, it is. Uh, please, please be careful. Because you guys know, like, like exercise and working out, man, that's, that's the slippery slope to eating right. <laughs> Life isn't worth it at that point, everybody. It's just, it's just not. And I, I speak from experience. I, uh, I, I used to be a vegetarian, and, and my friends teased me about it all the time. They were like, Leanne, how can you be a vegetarian? Still wear a leather jacket. Isn't that hypocritical? I'm like, you say hypocritical, I say, well, just vegetarian. <laughs> I stopped being a vegetarian because I was hungry. <laughs> and bacon is delicious. <laughs> Here's the thing. I thought that one of the perks of adulthood is that we get to eat what we want. Right? Apparently, that's not the case. Not only is it not the case, people are trying to scare us into eating what they think we should. Right? Like, like I, I saw, I saw a, a news teaser the other day, right? It was like, the truth about peanut butter. I turned the TV off. I don't want no truth about peanut butter. <laughs> I don't want to know if it beats his kids, cheats on his taxes, I don't care. <laughs> Because here's the thing, you guys, I'm from the generation that survived asbestos and lead paint. Past the peanut butter. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know what happened to us, man. I mean, when ISIS finds out about peanuts, we are fucked. <laughs> oh my God, we're gonna have to pull the baby boomers out of retirement to defend us. Because <laughs> Gen X ain't ready. <laughs> We're still slacking. <laughs> it's ridiculous, man, ridiculous. Like, like, we're so, I, I, okay, I guess I understand it, but the push to eat healthy, but there's a way to do it, right? It, it's gotta be, food's gotta be organic, right? It's gotta be gluten-free. It's gotta be registered to vote. What the hell? <laughs> like, I, I, I had some free-range chicken the other day, and I, I took my first bite, I, oh my God, what, what is this, in, what's in this chicken? Chicken, oh my God. <laughs> Where are the chemicals? <laughs> that is my plan to get my superpowers, everybody. <laughs> I'm trying to be an X-Man. <laughs> ridiculous, man. This ridiculous, man. And you know what? It, it, it's really, it's, it's such a, an interesting trend. Like, the companies are even changing, right? And some of it's really good, some of it's not. Right? Like, did you hear this? Kellogg's announced that they're, they're planning on making Frosted Flakes now with a third less sugar. What? Yeah. <laughs> yes, personally, I want my Frosted Flakes with a third less flakes. Because yeah. <laughs> look, Frosted Flakes with less sugar? 
that's like water with less hydrogen. Yeah. <laughs> right? Instead of H2O, you get ho. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. They did the same thing with potato chips, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, right? They're supposed to be better for us now, you know, because they're fat free. But the ingredient that makes them fat free causes anal leakage. <laughs> Sign me up for that. <laughs> I mean, look, I want to lose a pound or two, but I don't want it leaking out of my ass. <laughs> you diapers leave a panty line. That ain't sexy. <laughs> Here, here's what I, I, I find very interesting about our culture. We spend a lot of time worried about our bodies and not enough about our minds. Right? Mental health. We don't even talk about that, right? Because what's the sense of being cut and crazy? <laughs> right? I, I, I'm one of those people, I, crazy is not sexy to me. Okay, I have friends that'll do a credit check, I'm gonna do a Rorschach test. <laughs> right? I'm off of slipping in a little psychological exam on somebody. You know, like, baby, baby, look at this picture, tell me what you see. <laughs> you stabbing me? I got to go. <laughs> But mental health is just as important as your physical health, right? Like somebody said to me recently, they said, Leanne, you know, you're a, you're a very angry person. And I said, fuck you, no I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> and here's the thing, I, I never wanted to admit to being angry, right? Because the angry black woman is a stereotype. Right? And it's actually kind of inaccurate. We're not all angry all the time. We take turns. <laughs> Tonight's my night off. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> but anger, man, it's, it's, it's situational and generational, right? Like my, my grandma, my nana, she got into an argument with her cousin and they didn't speak for 50 years. Right? And I'm like, you know what, nana? Whatever happened on the Mayflower really should have stayed on the Mayflower. I mean, I'm a star. Um, I'm sorry, too soon? It's actually too late. <laughs> but anger, man, it's so dangerous, so detrimental. My, uh, my mom, when my mom gets angry, uh, she time travels. Right? Okay, okay. She could be arguing with my dad about something that happened today or 30 years ago. And he's just gotta be ready. It's like the old man matrix. Because <laughs> she's so booty, right? Like, like, she'll be like, what do I want for Valentine's Day? I want you to take down that Christmas tree. That's what I want. <laughs> Thank you, lady. But here's the thing, knowing my lineage, I, I try to do better consciously, right? Like I read, I, I was reading a self-help book that said if, you, if you're having an argument with somebody, you're supposed to stop and ask yourself, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? <sighs> what if being right makes you happy? <laughs> problems with self-help books, right? I mean, first of all, mental health shouldn't be do-it-yourself, but whatever. Um, the second problem is that self-help books don't make good gifts. <laughs> if somebody gives you a self-help book, they're trying to say you're fucked up. <laughs> and if you, on the other hand, give a self-help book to someone who has a real mental illness, that's like telling somebody with polio to walk it off. <laughs> but I actually, I tried once, I tried to, uh, to do all the things that they tell you to do in the self-help books, right? I, uh, I was getting up early, I was, I was exercising, I was meditating, I was feng shui you know. And I started feeling way too good to go to work. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what am I supposed to do now? Call in happy? <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm not coming in today because I'm in a really good headspace right now. <laughs> and I don't want you people fucking it up. <laughs> Here's the thing, 
it, self-help books are fine as far as they go. At some point, you might need some therapy, right? Therapy's expensive, isn't it? Ooh, listen, I went to one lady, she wants to charge me $150 an hour to talk. I was like, bitch, I could talk to the voices in my head for free. <laughs> And then there's the problem of finding a therapist who matches you, right? It's a lot like dating. You have to find somebody that gets you, right? That's why I really wish we had like, like therapy speed dating. <laughs> why you get a bunch of therapists in the room, right? And you pitch your problem and they pitch a solution. Right? It's like, okay, uh, lost my job, got divorced, the dog died, go. <laughs> huh. Side hustle, uh, e-harmony, and get a cat. You are hired, my friend. <laughs> I actually don't know if I'm ready for a cat. Do I have cat people? Do I have cat people in the audience? Cat people? Oh my god, I love cat people. Y'all are so special. <laughs> no, you, I, I actually do admire you. I'll tell you why. I really, I don't think that I have enough self-esteem to own a cat. Because <laughs> I need something in my house that loves me, is not actively trying to outthink me, is plotting my overthrow. I can't go home to Game of Thrones. I can't. What does he want? Oh my God, the cat is named Littlefinger. What are we doing? <laughs> Thank you, Game of Thrones fans. Oh my God. Bad. I, uh, I have a, uh, my aunt uh, has a cat, man. She's, uh, whew. Here's what happened. One year, my aunt sent me a card from her cat. <laughs> yes, yes, it said happy birthday from Mr. Shenanigans. <laughs> Which is really sweet, but I know this cat. He don't care. <laughs> Where are my dog people? Do I have dog people in the audience? I love dog people. We're so excited. Right? Dogs are the best, man. They're like furry Prozac. It's like awesome. Now, actually, you know what? I just, I, whether it's a cat or a dog, honestly, I just, I think life is better with fur in it, man. It just is. You know, I, I just, the world, the world would be so much of a better place if we all treated each other hot as good as we treated our pets, right? I would be in heaven if every day somebody rubbed me on my tummy and said, who's the best girl in the whole world? <laughs> me. <laughs> no, I, should, I really should stop saying that because there's a, there's a creepy dude on Twitter that keeps offering to do that. Hashtag help me. <laughs> but I, uh, I am a little biased. I'm a little biased because I, I am a dog person. I used, to, I used to have a little Cocker Spaniel. Oh my God, he had, a, he had a little nub of a tail. He would wag it so fast, he looked like Shakira. It was adorable. It was adorable. Uh, he, was, uh, he was a rescue, by the way. My boy was a rescue. And uh, that means he came with some problems. <laughs> Yeah, he had really, really bad separation anxiety. Like he would follow me around the house all the time. Like it was like, it was like ludicrous. Like when I move, you move, just like that. <laughs> Thank you for catching the reference. Appreciate it. Man, but I, uh, I, 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 I do miss, I do miss having a dog. I'm that, I'm that person that I walk up and talk to pet owners, like, do you know what I mean? Like, you know how, you know how single people look at happy couples? That's how I look at pet owners now. Like, oh, right? So I walk up, I'll start talking to them, and you know, when their owner's not paying attention, I'll pet the dog a little extra, like, hey, furry boy, how you doing? <laughs> she treats you good. <laughs> you getting real milk bones and no frills, cause uh, I can hook you up. <laughs> I mean, here's the deal, ladies. Uh, you don't have to worry about your man, but I will steal your dog. <laughs> like, here's how bad it is. Here's how bad it is. If um, a guy in a sketchy white van drove up 
open the door and said, I got puppies, I'd get in. <laughs> Kids would be lining up behind me because they see me getting in, they think it's safe. I'd be like, hey, 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 wait your turn. I was here first. Here's the thing though, if I get in that van, he better have some puppies or he's gonna have some problems, right? Cause he's gonna be arrested for kidnapping. I'm gonna be arrested for murder. <laughs> Love dogs. I, you know, somebody, I saw, a, um, I saw a really, really cute police dog. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't resist. And I, I, I went up and I said, excuse me, officer, um, is your dog on duty? And he said, yes, ma'am, he is, but I'm not. <laughs> Okay. Are you good on the leash? <laughs> what? I'm dating. I'm serious out here. <laughs> if you don't ask, you don't get. <laughs> Man, I, I find the I find the human dating experience very interesting. Oh my gosh, as opposed to the Vulcan dating experience. Just, if I could just do it that way, that'd be great. The pond far every seven years, I'm in! <laughs> just find, trying to find where my nerds are. Just trying to find where my nerds are. Like, what are the odds? What are the odds we're here? Oh my god, I am so... I thought I was super nerdy until I went to Dragon Con. And then I like... Like, my nerdiness was like average, right? Like, like, like everybody, do you guys, okay, like some of you know, some of you, do you know what Dragon Con is? Yep. Yeah. Okay, okay, you guys know. Okay, because here's the thing, I'm, I'm the nerdy one among my friends, like they're like, they're like nerd illiterate, so I'm, so they don't know what Dragon, like, like yeah, what's Dragon Con? Is that like Comic Con with dragons? <laughs> yes. <laughs> They'd be dragons. <laughs> Like, they also think that my, my nerdiness translates into technical knowledge. Right? Uh, yeah, you know, would be like, like, like Leanne, you're a, you're a science fiction fan. Um, what's wrong with my iPhone? <laughs> uh, did you buy on the dark side? I don't understand. <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Dragon Home was such an awesome experience. Man. You, you know what, you know, somebody, I, I, I was, I, okay, I'm a Star Trek fan, clearly. Oh my God, yes, they, of course I am. Like, and I love the series so much. Like, I'm not even a comic that does impressions, but I'll, I'll do a triple, like, that's like the only <laughs> impression. <laughs> <laughs> only here in Dragon Con do people clap for that. <laughs> like, so nerdy. Um, I don't fall into the trap of which series is better. The original series is the original series, right? That's, that's its thing, it stands on its own, that's canon, that's you don't touch that. Um, after that, uh, I think Jean-Luc Picard is the sexiest captain ever. Oh my God, I love him. He's, he's British, he's bald, he's British. Like what? I love that. <laughs> Like, because of him, I think, like, my stripper name would be Earl Grey Hot. Like, that. <laughs> I also loved uh, Commander Sisko, Avery Brooks. Oh, I, I, I've loved him since a man called Hawk. Like, what? Oh, that brother was so sick. Here's how much I love him. Like, I don't even, I'm not even mad that he has a restraining order out on me. Um, <laughs> Because true love forgives, everybody. <laughs> true love forgives. Oh my god. Um, do I have Star Wars fans here? Star Wars fans? Star Wars fans? <laughs> uh, listen, I, I think, I, I don't get into that argument either. I think it's big sci-fi love. It really is. Like, if we could just, if we could just come together and, and agree that, that we were all, you know, tortured, lonely children, <laughs> <laughs> we'd be fine. <laughs> Um, I, I do have a, a, a couple of uh, caveats, though, uh, as, a, as a Star Wars fan. Um, and I, I don't think I'm going out on any limbs here. Uh, Jar Jar Binks can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Phil. So much. I much prefer Ewoks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I can't even 
can't, I can't even do it. I can't even do the impression. Oh my god. But yeah, no, I'm sorry. I've exhausted my my nerdiness. I, I I've tread uh, too much. Although I will say, I I got. Um, well, I was gonna say I got Netflix. That's not true. Um, I got a friend with a Netflix password. <laughs> which is how grown-ups do it. What? <laughs> and, but I, I Netflixed irresponsibly. I binge-watched 10 seasons of Futurama. <laughs> that changes a person. <laughs> like, I walk into rooms now saying, good news, everyone! <laughs> Thank you for supporting me. <laughs> but yeah, man, I am, uh, I am human dating. It's so weird. You know what it is? I'm able to step back and look at things a little differently now. Like, I was dating a guy, and uh, I thought it was getting serious, uh, but he didn't pop the question. Instead, he asked me how I felt about having an open marriage. I was like, well, that depends on how you feel about having an open casket. <laughs> it's so rude, right? You know, answering a question with a question, but uh, <laughs> he caught me off guard. <laughs> I also don't believe some of the, the casual things people say about dating, right? The people say that there, there are no good men out there. That is not true. That is not true at all, man. I was, listen, I was walking across the street one time and, and I didn't see this car speeding towards me. This man, he reached out and he pulled me back and he was like, I can't let somebody pretty as you get hurt. I was like, oh man, if I was ugly, I'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> like a bad hair day and no makeup, he'd have shoved me in front of the car. <laughs> That's actually why I try to dress nice, everybody. This isn't vanity, this is safety. <laughs> And I, listen, hair, man, hair is a whole other issue. It's actually a very serious issue for black women. Oh my God. Like if the choice is between paying rent and getting our hair done, we gonna be homeless with a fly dude. That's how that works out. <laughs> oh my God. And I, uh, this is, uh, this is all, I have dreadlocks. A lot of people ask me, um, I have little dreadlocks. This is all my own hair. Uh, no Asian women were harmed in any way uh, <laughs> to make this happen. Um, and I, I'll, I'll share a little bit. I, I do my own hair. Um, which is a little different, because I, I, I just stopped going to the beauty parlor, because it was a very enervating experience, right? Okay. I, I, I'll explain. Um, if I had an appointment at nine, they might see me by noon. Yeah, and if I'm lucky, I get home in time for dinner. Yeah, yeah, see, that's why black women don't get reported missing right away. <laughs> We'll be gone two, three days. People just think we're getting our hair done. <laughs> but I, uh, I do try to put a decent package uh, together. You know, you put your best foot forward. You know, it's, it's like, you know, you go out in public, people are looking at you. It's community service. Gussie up. <laughs> I got half a clap for that. <laughs> but no, you know what it is? I, I, I've gotten to... Uh, the point in my life where I think I figured it out. I think I figured it out. I could be wrong, but I think I figured it out. Um, when you're dating for serious, you're not just playing. Um, it works better if you know what you want, right? If you know what works for you. Like, how could you figure out what the other person wants if you don't know what you want, right? And it doesn't have to be complicated, right? Like, I, I like smart, sane, good hygiene. <laughs> Right? I mean, look, if a man's body odor is strong enough to reach out and smack me in the face, I think that should be considered domestic violence, don't y'all? <laughs> Gentlemen, I love you, I really do. Stop trying to think up a good line. Just wash your ass. That's a good start. <laughs> Clean is the new sexy. <laughs> but figure out what you want. Right? I, I realized I like men who are uh, confident, but not pushy, right? That's, that's why I have a hard time dating Jamaican men. Because a Jamaican man will hit on you as you are walking down the aisle. 
Hey, pretty girl, all in white, how you doing? <laughs> you busy? <laughs> yes, I am, Trevor. <laughs> like here's the, you know what, again, I don't think it has to be uh, complicated at all, right? Like, you know what, you know what would tickle my fancy? Uh, I would love it if I found a man who didn't complain about how big my handbag is. Because I'm a big bag woman. You need to be good with that. Because whatever you need, I got it. Right? You need a pen, I got it. Piece of gum, I got it. Sham wow, don't ask no damn questions, just know I got it. Tiny purse girl, that's adorable. She ain't got nothing in that bag but lipstick and hope. She's not gonna help you survive the zombie apocalypse. Come on, son. God, everything's the zombie apocalypse now. Do, uh, do I have Walking Dead fans in the room? Walking Dead fans? Anybody? Walking Dead? Okay, can I, can I please tell you honestly, I love that show and I hate that show. Okay, because I don't like what it's taught me about myself. Right? I, I know from watching that show, I am not going to survive the zombie apocalypse. Okay? I'm gonna be that girl at the shopping mall like carrying a bunch of bags going, oh my God, why is everybody screaming? Is there a sale? <laughs> Stop fighting me, this ain't the food court. <laughs> so inappropriate. <laughs> Here's the other thing. Uh, I don't want to survive the zombie apocalypse. Right? We all here, did y'all see Mika's presentation? Did y'all? Yeah. Did she scare the shit out of y'all too? <laughs> Scariest thing she said is talk to your neighbors. I'm like, mm-mm. <laughs> nah, I'm gonna go get some coffee. She's tripping, I'm not. <laughs> talk to my neighbors, I'm a New Yorker. That's how people end up missing. Mm, I ain't gonna miss Cause the person that's supposed to know I'm missing is the one that made me missing. I'm not doing that. She's like, what's, what's your plan? I'm like, I'm gonna die in the first wave. That's my plan. <laughs> Had my note written and everything. Hey, it was nice, saw the wave coming, it was beautiful. <laughs> no idea. Oh, man, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't wanna survive. I don't wanna survive the zombie apocalypse, man. I don't, like, no, I really don't. Man, this, this could be no, no batteries, no electricity. I'm not doing this shit by hand, no way. <laughs> woman enough to admit I'm not that good at it. <laughs> I tried once. It took me six hours. <laughs> I got carpal tunnel. <laughs> you know, I think this is a job that, is, that should be outsourced. <laughs> I'm okay with hiring an immigrant. <laughs> They do the job, they don't complain, I'm happy. <laughs> I really don't want this wall they talking about. <laughs> it's the most insane thing I've ever heard, man. I wanna build a wall, keep Mexicans from coming here and taking our jobs. But have we not read the papers? Our jobs are in India, what the hell? <laughs> oh wow. Well. It's just crazy, it's not a, not a good time, but. Oh, alas, I do try to, um, I do try to have fun in life. Because what else is there, you guys? And here's, the, here's the thing, um, as I am, I am dating and, and I am having a good time, um, I'm getting mixed signals in terms of advice, right? Like my friends are telling me that, that men should always pay for dates. Is that true? No. Okay, thank you guys, thank you. Because you, know, no, you know what it is? I, I actually thought about it. If I had to pay for dates all the time, I might start expecting a man to put out. <laughs> like dinner and a movie? I think I need to see some booty. Stop crying, get naked. Well, now you shouldn't have had the popcorn. I'm not backing down from that. <laughs> I know I set back the women's movement, but I'm good. <laughs>
and say, actually, you know what, here's the thing. Um, we used to call it, uh, when he pays, you pay, he pays, you pay. Uh, we used to call that going Dutch, right? I don't have a problem with going Dutch. I just don't like the fact that we call it going Dutch. Because that implies that the date might end in slavery. <laughs> I see you paid attention in history class. <laughs> Delightful. Oh my gosh. Usually I have to refer people to this channel we have called History. <laughs> I actually like the History Channel because you can actually learn some weird stuff on there on occasion. Right? Like I, I was watching the History Channel once and I, I didn't know this at the time. Did you know that uh, Ring Around the Rosie is a children's nursery rhyme about the Black Plague? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that creepy? Because we don't have nursery rhymes about cancer. Right? Like if all I do is supersize my cells will all metastasize, trans fat, trans fat, we're all gonna die. I don't wanna play that. I, uh, I think the best, the best advice I've gotten so far um, about relationships is that all of them, all relationships need the three C's. Have you guys heard about this? Okay, it's chemistry, compatibility, and commitment. And I think you need all three, right? Because if you just have chemistry, you just have sex. If you just have compatibility, you just have a friend. If you have commitment, you got a stalker. <laughs> Now, please understand, I'm not anti-stalker. Um, I think it's just a matter of focusing the energy, right? Like, as long as you stare through that window, why don't you clean it? <laughs> These kids today are so lazy. <laughs> I've been saying, you guys do realize this is a comedy, right? Because some of y'all reacting like, oh, this shit is real. No. <laughs> it's hyperbole. <laughs> Now, I like the three C's. Actually, though, I think there should be a fourth C. That's communication. You got to talk to your partner. You really do. You know, and I, I, I'm really, particularly on this, speaking to the women in the room, because we have this thing where we think if someone really loves us, they can read our minds. <sighs> Ladies, men possess many fabulous qualities. Mind reading is not among them, okay? So give them a chance. Leave your diary open. <laughs> With highlighted passages. <laughs> Maybe a few pointy arrow sticky notes, so... <laughs> he might have a shot. Because <laughs> they did a study, they did a study, and they found that married women who force themselves to stay quiet during arguments are four times more likely to die early. Yeah, that's how I know I'ma live forever. <laughs> I even argue in my sleep. And another thing. <laughs> now, uh, please um, don't misunderstand uh, what I'm saying. Some people hear me say communication and they think I mean honesty. Uh, <laughs> I do not. Because that's, uh, for that way lies madness, uh, everybody. Um, I said that because I was, I was on a date. First date, first date, he wants to be honest. He's like, Leanne, you know, I'm, a, I'm an environmentalist. Uh, I'm never gonna buy you flowers. I'm an activist. I'm never gonna buy you diamonds. I'm like, well, I'm a bitch. I'm never gonna give you pussy. Like, what do we mean? <laughs> this didn't have to happen, you guys. <laughs> I was pushed. <laughs> you can see that. Yeah. But here's the thing. Um, I talk about relationships and dating and love. Because um, why wouldn't I? I mean, love is the best game in town. Why wouldn't you play? Right? And you know, that, what, what freaks everybody out is the heartbreak part of it. Listen, that just happens, okay? Heartbreak happens. Get some haga dolls, get some Netflix, you'll be fine. Get back in the game. Right? Like, you know what, can I tell you? I caught my best friend's husband cheating. I was, it caught me so much by surprise, I reacted kind of childishly. I was like, ooh, I'm telling. 
I caught you cheating. I'm gonna tell her, and you can't stop me. Who put the gun down? <laughs> but listen, love is the best game in town, right? And no matter how, how hard we think dating is, you guys know it's way worse for other species, right? Oh my God, there's an octopus with a detachable penis. Yes, when they're ready to mate, the penis detaches, floats off, attaches to the female. Can you imagine? You are standing at the bar, minding your business. All of a sudden, Whose penis is this? <laughs> Seriously, you guys, this is a brand new dress. Whose penis is this? <laughs> Be easy to tell the popular girls all covered in penises. <laughs> It's so easy, right? Just look at it and go, oh. <laughs> Who's cute little tiny penis? Is this? <laughs> and then it just floats away. <laughs> like, oh, that's not pre cum, it's crying. <laughs> that was the one too far? That was the one? You guys having fun with me so far? That wasn't everybody, but okay. No, I, I'm enjoying myself. I, you know, just I, I love coming to these events. I'm, I'm always so honored and so thrilled uh, to be invited because when I come here, you guys let me, you let me come up here and be myself. And yeah, no, and I, I don't take that for granted. I really appreciate it. Because when I, when I started stand-up, I, I didn't want to be a black comic. I just wanted to be a comic. And, and that, that pretty much backfired. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, look, I've never been on BET. Well, they asked me to do it, but they asked me to do it for free. They were like, do it for your people. My landlord is my people. Like, what? <laughs> But I, um, I, can't, I can't really complain. I, I, I've gotten the opportunity um, to be a stand-up. This, this is actually my anniversary year, uh, everybody. Uh, this is my 25th year. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I started when I was three. <laughs> don't ask questions, don't ask questions. <laughs> No, but it, you know, it's, it's allowed me to do several things. Uh, you know, I do stand-up, uh, I'm an author. You guys know that, right? I'm an author now. Did you know? I am. Yay for me. Um, actually, you know what? My chair is way over here, but I brought one of my books with me. Uh, it's the first one I wrote, actually. It's called Dick Jokes. Uh, and if you are visually challenged, uh, that is D-I-C-T. Uh, short for dictionary, because in addition to all of my nerdiness, I'm also a giant word nerd. Um, thank you. Oh my God. You know what? I, I was an English major, which explains comedy. Uh, <laughs> but I just think words would be so much more fun if they meant what they sound like. Right? Like, grammatology sounds like it's the study of grandmothers. <laughs> Histrionics sounds like the history of Ebonics. Elixir sounds like how British men give oral sex. <laughs> Elixir. <laughs> I know that word will never be the same for you now. <laughs> but um, 
Because it's my, is, this one is my first, I uh, actually dedicated it to my parents. Yeah. I did, no, I did, it's very short. It says, to my parents, you are my favorite black people. <laughs> they, they didn't find that funny. But uh, they still bought the book, uh, one each, because uh, apparently I'm not in the will. <laughs> write funny little humor books, and I actually have some of these with me, um, if you guys are interested. I write these because um, we need more laughter, we need more humor in our lives, you know. It, you, you need something with you in the bathroom to help move things along. <laughs> That's what this does. <laughs> it's unashamedly a bathroom book. But, um, no, it's, I, I don't, no, I do know how you guys feel. It's been a rough year, hasn't it? This has been unbelievable, man. And you know what, here's the thing. I, I, I've been doing it partially to myself. I've, I've been watching both Fox and CNN. Oh God. Yeah, yeah, so I could be equally misinformed <laughs> on a variety of subjects. Um, I, uh, if I had to choose though, it's, it's, I'm a little more, more CNN because Anderson Cooper is so cute. <laughs> oh my God, I don't even care what he's saying. I just turn the sound down, watch his lips move. I'm like, <laughs> I had to cut back though, I had to cut back because I, uh, I fell asleep one night watching Anderson Cooper. Uh, I woke up, it was Larry King. I was like, oh! <laughs> How long have I been out? <laughs> <laughs> but these are, these are really weird times. And the, uh, well, I'll, be, I'll be real personal. Um, it, it is not a good time for brown people in this country. Okay, like even UPS is nervous. <laughs> I'm FedEx and everything. I'm not taking any chances. Wow, y'all need to loosen up. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I, uh, someone gave me um, some advice, you know, and I'll share it. They told me, because uh, I was getting really, really stressed out. They said, if you really want to live a stress-free, happy life, you have to do three things. You, you got to work like you don't need the money, love like you've never been hurt, and dance like nobody's watching. That's easier said than done, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because I think most of us work like we're deep in debt, love like we're lonely and desperate, and dance like we're having a seizure. Like, what? <laughs> <sighs> but I share this with you guys. We're the smart people in the room, right? Mm -hmm. Right? We're the ones who give a shit, right? You guys wouldn't be here if you didn't, you're the ones looking at things critically going, hey, wait a minute, right? And that takes a lot of energy, right? So in doing that work, please, I, I, honestly, please remember to take care of yourselves, right? Please, because that, that's why I love that you guys included comedy tonight, right? A chance to release some of those, some of those endorphins and have a good time and hopefully sneak some liquor if you're smart. <laughs> I got some fireball in my bag, I'm not kidding. Because <laughs> yeah. here's the thing, I, I love what I do. What I, what I, doing this has become even more important now. You know, I'm doing more shows than ever because this is what people need, right? We need to laugh. And I, be, I really believe that laughter gives people hope, right? And my hope is that if we can laugh together, we can live together. Now, maybe not in this neighborhood specifically. Because <laughs> it's all fun and games, so you start messing with the property values, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like you guys. You're slow, but you catch on. You catch on. You catch on. Um, but I, uh, I have had a, a, a good time, and I, I invite you guys to um, follow me. And I know, you know, here's the, I know a lot of people here. You know, a lot of people, you know, come to various conferences, and so it almost feels like I'm, I'm showing up to camp, and I, I'm, I'm seeing family and friends, and I absolutely love that. I also know that I'm meeting some of you for the first time. Um, and if that's the case, uh, I will tell you my name again. It's Leanne. And it's got a really odd spelling to it. It's L-E-I-G-H-A-N-N. -N. Yeah, my, my parents are from the 60s. They were doing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> but when you, when you hear it, you know the J and H are silent, right? But like when I was in school and teachers were taking attendance on the first day, like they didn't know. 
Like the teacher would always show up like, ah, oh, Kevin Jackson, oh, very nice. Michael Kelly, very good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like a hand? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for laughing at the childhood pain. I appreciate it. <laughs> but now that you guys know me, you know my name. Um, I'm, I'm so easy to find on, on social media. You know, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm on platforms I don't even understand. But apparently, <laughs> that's what we have to do now. But I guess the easiest thing I always tell people: uh, I invite you to visit my website. It's very funny, lady. Dot com, and that's, uh, that's not a declaration at all. That's an aspiration, <laughs> right? Because if you've enjoyed me, then yeah, I'm very funny lady, Leanne Lord. If you have not enjoyed me tonight, uh, my name is Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, thank you so much for having me. We go play some games. I'm going to prom. I'm gonna get drunk like it was original prom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's have some more fun, you guys.